Today I'd like to talk about curse ejectors. This is an action this is actually an 1861 Navy with a round barrel. And this gun is actually a permanent conversion, so it is a permanent firearm. It has a R&D screwed in ring. You'll notice that the ring right here at the top doesn't necessarily line up with the top of the frame. This is pretty typical. Italians are kind of all over the board with their frames. They're, I think they're final polished from a rough casting. So, and because the back of the cylinder is curved off, it doesn't really matter. But it is a, it is a, an issue that, that is a known issue that some people have a problem with. Another issue that a lot of these guns have, and you'll notice here, nothing happens for the first half inch of hammer travel that you can see. But if you look down bottom, right there, you will see that actually it's retracting the bolt. There has to be a certain amount of play in the design, or there happens to be a certain amount of play in the design so that so the bolt can be retracted before the cylinder starts turning because if you try to turn the cylinder with the bolt still in place you lock the gun up and the other issue that a lot of these rings cause is right here at the top the projection that's in front of the hammer face this is the hammer face is the sight that projection okay and you always have to go all the way back with these guns before you pull the trigger to drop the hammer back down. That projection can interfere with the ring, depending on a number of things. The cylinder end gap is very tight, and there's been no arbor correction. You can over wedge the gun. The wedge is what you use to hold the gun together. And put enough force into the cylinder, and then into the ring, that the hammer will contact the ring. If the hammer contacts the ring a little bit, the bolt does not fall off the hammer cam. If you don't understand that, you could probably make a video on YouTube and denigrate it. But, cursed ejector, that's actually what this is about. The cursed ejector, if you'll notice, right here, has a relief cut in it for the wedge to come through. The wedge is only retained by the tab on this little spring right here. The tab pops through the frame and holds it, keeps the wedge from falling back out. The wedge itself is wedge-shaped. Imagine that. There's an angle to it. That wedge, if it's fit, absolutely correctly will be tight against the barrel at the front and the slot in the arbor at the back. When I say tight, I just mean touching enough to retain things. When this tab pops over the frame, right there, I fit a wedge so that that happens, but the design of the cursed ejector typically holds the wedge spring down because that little tab can't pop over the frame anymore. And so it takes a little more force to hold the wedge in the gun with a cursed ejector. Typically you tap it pretty tight with a, with a mallet if you have an ejector on your gun. Of course the ejector is only retained by a by a little tab that goes inside the old plunger hole for the rammer. And because of that, because it's only retained up here in the front, they will move, no matter what. This design or the 1851 Navy, they both basically end up the same way. And so, if you push the wedge through and push the ejector up a little bit and tap the wedge till the spring catch comes up, it should stay in unless recoil causes this to push that back down. But once again, you've got to tap the wedge tight enough that it stays. 
If you push it in with your thumbs, then it, in this situation, it's not going to stay in place because of the ejector housing. That's it. Just wanted to cover cursed ejectors and how they actually function on your gun. Have a great day.